Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager here once again with another video on Arrow Season 6. Now, just quickly before we get into the rest of the video, Comic-Con is obviously in just under a week from now. So, uh, yeah, pretty exciting times, isn't it? Now, obviously, uh, a lot of you guys would most likely assume or presume or just guess that I will be doing breakdowns for all the trailers that come out in regards to the, to the uh, DC TV stuff. So, Flash and Arrow 100% will be getting trailers. You would think Legends would be as well. I know they're filming their episodes out of order, but they might still show a trailer of sorts. Supergirl's the only one where I'm a bit, like, not sure if they're going to release a trailer, but they might release something else. Who knows? But hopefully it's a trailer. So there will be breakdowns of all those trailers, hopefully. Um, or no, definitely. If they release trailers, I'll definitely do the breakdowns for them. And there will be movies such as Justice League and Aquaman and stuff like that if they do show footage or trailers. I'll try and do breakdowns of those, but, we'll, you know, we'll play it by ear and see if I have time to do that. But one thing I would like to ask you guys is reactions. Would you like me to do the trailer reactions for something from Comic-Con? Maybe I'll do the breakdowns for the trailers for the TV shows and I might do reactions to the Justice League and Aquaman and anything like that. But uh, we'll, yeah, as I said, we'll play it by ear. But let me know if you would be interested in seeing any sort of reaction uh, from the Comic-Con stuff. Because it's something I don't do too often. I did a reaction to the season 5 finale for Arrow. A lot of people enjoyed it. So I think I said I would like to save it for special stuff and I guess, you know, trailers from Comic-Con are sort of special. So just let me know if you'd like maybe like Justice League trailer reaction, Aquaman footage reaction, anything like that in the comments section and I'll definitely try and deliver come this weekend at Comic-Con. Now, as you would know, if you have watched my most recent video on The Flash, you know, the one before this video, I went over some casting descriptions for some new characters that would be showing up in season four one of which was the villain for that season, The Thinker. So around a month or so ago, roughly, I think it was, something similar to what we went over in that Flash video dropped regarding Arrow Season 6, and to be more specific, it's villain. You might be thinking to yourself why I didn't cover this a month ago when it first dropped online, which of course makes sense, like why didn't I go over it back then? Well, the main reason for it is down to the fact that it just looked sort of fake, but this description for this new big bad for Arrow Season 6 is in the same style as the Flash casting descriptions I went over yesterday. So even though this isn't 100% confirmation, it is more likely to be, to be true, sorry, than it is false, just due to all the Flash stuff that came out, so I thought I better go over it. So I will go over the casting description and then go over how they could play it into the history of the show as well as the current setting of season six and then go over their comic book history as well. So let's jump into it. So this new villain for Arrow season six is known as Ricardo Diaz and his description goes as follows. He is a male, 30s to 40s with a diverse ethnicity. He is a hardened ex-con recently released from prison for crimes he did not commit. Ricardo uses his freedom and $25 million in settlement money to establish control over Star City's criminal underworld. He's a martial arts and fighting expert honed by years of life on the street and in prison. Now, if Ricardo Diaz does end up being the villain for season six, then I will be one very, very happy man and just viewer of Arrow, as this description just, you know, describes the perfect villain for the show, a street level villain. This is where Arrow should have gone in season four, instead of going down the weird magical route with Damien Dark. I do think that Prometheus was a brilliant villain though, when it came to connecting season four to the future of the show, and obviously that being season six with the whole return to the street level crime thing. Even though we did get a bit of that in early season five with Tobias Church, if you remember that. But speaking of Tobias Church, he is a good example when it comes to what to expect from Ricardo Diaz. But to a bigger extent, as I do feel we may get some connections between the past few years of Star City and Ricardo's journey to prison and eventual release. As the description does say, he was imprisoned for crimes that he did not commit. And due to this, he receives $25 million as settlement. So, uh, I would go to prison for a couple of years if it meant me getting $25 million, but just saying. So, I think it would be pretty cool if they were to show how he came to be imprisoned, like what was the crime and who really did it. I think that could be a massive thing in the season. Because I think if, like, he finds out who really did it, like, he could have known the whole time. Maybe it's his first target when he gets out of prison. It's like to get to someone, but they might be really high up and they might be really hard to get to. So it takes some time for him to build up and actually get his revenge. Also, they could include characters such as Quentin Lance, you know, earlier on in his uh, career in the police department. 
and even possibly even like Earth One Laurel in flashbacks as it could have been a part of his journey to prison, depending on when he went to prison. Like he is in his 30s and 40s. So he might've gone to prison in, in like his early 20s, which would, you know, cut Laurel out of the picture. But if say he only went to prison, maybe like one or two years before Oliver came back from the island, Laurel could have been in like the legal system then and she might've helped with his uh, incarceration and his actual imprisonment. So that could be something pretty cool to actually bring Earth One Laurel back into the picture, even if it's only for a tiny bit. And even in the present day of Arrow season six, they could have Oliver face off a lot with Ricardo Diaz as not the Green Arrow, but as Mayor Queen. And even though we did see some of that in season five, that was really only after Adrian Chase was revealed as Prometheus. That's really where Oliver was more as the mayor than he was in running around in the hood as uh, the Green Arrow. Ricardo Diaz could be, you know, obviously controlling the underground, but also be targeting the higher ups in Star City and getting payback on whatever corrupt things led to him getting wrongfully imprisoned. They do need to still keep the whole mayor side of Oliver's life relevant to the show. Just because it was relevant to the plot in season five, especially in that back half because of all the Adrian Chase stuff, that doesn't mean it should be any less of a focus come season six. So I think Ricardo trying to get that payback or revenge on the higher ups would be a pretty damn solid way to involve Oliver as mayor again. Now, the one thing I most likely should have mentioned earlier on in the video, but I didn't, you know, want, I did want to leave it until now is the other name that Ricardo Diaz is known by in the comics and that is Richard Dragon. Now I have done a Richard Dragon video before, but that was all the way back before season five. It was actually like, I think only like maybe two weeks or a week after Arrow season four ended because I was annoyed at how Arrow season four ended. And I was like, here's a villain you could use for season five. So I made a video on Richard Dragon, but it was pretty simple. So this video is gonna be a bit more in depth. Now in the new 52 run of Green Arrow, Richard Dragon was arguably the best of the villains that Green Arrow had to take on. I personally think that Green Arrow had one of the stronger runs in the new 52, apart from like one or two of the volumes. Like a lot of the other comics were a bit, uh, a bit average, apart from maybe Batman and one other, so maybe Justice League. Uh, so Green Arrow I think was one of the stronger ones in my opinion, anyway. The Ricardo Diaz, who is Richard Dragon in the new 52, is actually known as Ricardo Diaz Jr., and his father, Ricardo Diaz, was the like the kingpin of crime in the city. But that was until Green Arrow and Diggle. Yes, Diggle was in the New 52. That's where he got introduced into the comics. So, so the show Arrow actually inspired the comics. So yeah, but it was before those two got involved. And due to this, Ricardo Diaz Jr. went off and trained with none other than the League of Assassins. And this is where he was taught by the OG Richard Dragon. So this is where he learned all of his martial arts skills. However, Richard ended up, you know, getting a bit mad. He really couldn't control his temper. This is one thing that the, you know, the OG Richard Dragon was trying to control him and trying to teach him. But Richard Dragon was sort of, a, or Ricardo Diaz might I say, was a bit of a loose cannon. And he ended up killing his teacher, the OG Richard Dragon, and taking the name of Richard Dragon to use for himself. Sorry if I say Richard Dragon a lot in this video, but his name is, you know, sort of Richard Dragon. Upon his return to city life, this is where he started to get nasty, and this is what will most likely be going down in season six or something very similar. So he came back and killed all the gang leaders and took all the gangs over, controlling that criminal underground. So they could do that in Arrow season six, or they could just have it because he's got all this money, he just pays them off and goes, okay, I'll give you five million and I control your gang. But I don't know, if he knows all these martial arts skills, you think, can I save 5 million by just killing this one dude? You think he might do that, but we'll have to wait and see. Another thing that Richard Dragon did once he returned and took over the various gangs was that he actually brought together a few villains and formed a group known as the Longbow Hunters, which caused Green Arrow a bit of a headache. The Longbow Hunters had Brick, Count Vertigo, Killer Moth, and Red Dart as members. And they also had like the Clock King. He wasn't necessarily a member. He just sort of helped them. If I had to think up like a mock Longbow Hunters team right now for season six, I would most likely put Brick and Count Vertigo in as they are already established in the Arrowverse. Like one Count Vertigo has died, but that other one popped up at the beginning of season three, I think it was. So he's still alive, I'm pretty sure. So he can be involved along with Brick. Then I would actually include Cupid because why not? She's already existing in the universe. I think she would fit in. And then I would actually have one new villain most likely introduced earlier on in the season of season six. And, you know, Richard Dragon notices her or something or notices him or her or something. 
and brings them into the fold with the Longbow Hunters. We have had the Clock King once again introduced into the Arrowverse. He's appeared on Arrow and Flash, so he could be involved. I don't know. He does exist in the universe, so he was in the comics, so maybe they can put him in the show. In regards to Richard Dragon's origin on the show, I think it would be cool if he did have League of Assassins training, whether that be through prison or through the streets. But I don't think they will include a father for him. It does look like, you know, going by the description, that him being wrongfully imprisoned will replace the whole downfall of his father as the motivation behind what he is doing. He will most likely be a Hispanic actor to fit the name of Ricardo Diaz. So just let me know who you think could play him. Like someone that's bold, can rock a goatee maybe, look good with some tats. He's got to be pretty ripped, I guess, because of the martial arts stuff. But let me know who you think could uh, play Richard Dragon or Ricardo Diaz in the show. It would be interesting to see if they actually call him Richard Dragon or they just call him Ricardo Diaz or maybe they just have like a nickname on the streets where he's just called the Dragon. He might have like a dragon tattoo or something. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you did enjoy the video. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could leave a like. Let me know in the comments section down below what you think of all of this that I've said in the video. And as I said, do let me know about all that Comic-Con stuff. Would you like some reactions to like the, the movie trailers and stuff like that? And just other stuff that I wouldn't necessarily do like trailer breakdowns on and stuff like that. So just let me know in the comments. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you later, guys. Goodbye.